what you're about to hear is a, a, a really unique story from a, a bloke who is uh, truly changing uh, the way that we look after ourselves and our people. So please welcome Ronan McDonald from Cred. Thanks, Mick. It's wonderful to be here with you all uh, tonight. So Cred, we are a technology and education company. And my own background is in technology, but I studied neuroscience, specifically neuroleadership, a number of years ago. I put them together to form Cred in 2015. Uh, but look, Anna, I want to share a little bit more about myself and my backstory and Cred's origin story. So Cred was actually born out of my own lived experience with mental health. Um, in 2007, when the global financial crisis hit, we lost everything. And my wife, Neve, is here tonight, and it was a very difficult time. And I went from someone who was very outgoing, very relational, to someone who just couldn't get out of bed in the morning. And I just didn't know what to do. If anyone has read or listened to any of James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, he talks about starting with, with small actions. And that's exactly what I tried to do. I had an overwhelming desire to help others as well. I wanted to ensure that other people maybe didn't experience what I'd experienced, not from a financial planning perspective, but just the impacts of, on challenges on mental health. But again, I just didn't know what to do. And there's a wonderful lady here in the room tonight, Selena Griffith from U UNSW. I started going to some design thinking workshops at UNSW and God bless your patience, but you helped me and coached me through that time. Um, we went on a journey as Cred over those years and we were lucky to be incubated by the New South Wales Department of Finance, Service and Innovation to support the Premier's priority to reduce domestic violence reoffending. And again, Ben Pekatich is here as well tonight, gave us some great insights and coaching on that journey. And I, I didn't know what Cred was gonna become at that time, but I knew we wanted to help others. And it felt good to help others as well. So fast forward to 17X Sydney, 2019. That's me there, I'm questioning my choice of clothing at the moment. <laughs> I don't need to go well to get it, but something was sparked in me that night. And I just didn't know what it was. And I didn't know how to use the inspiration that I, I, I got from everyone's talks that night from Paul Dunn, you know, Anna was there, Mick, you're amazing. And I just knew I wanted to do something to build on what we had. At the same time, my three kids, this is Oscar, or I say our three kids, Oscar, um, Alana and Dara, um, were saying to me, it's okay for you, Dad, you're not gonna be here in a number of years when the world goes apart. And I thought, Wow, well, actually, it is happening right now. So again, what could I do to support the world they were going to live in? It wasn't about ego or legacy, but I just want to make sure that I use this time to make a difference. I don't know about you, I don't have a coal mine in my back garden, so I thought, <laughs> I'm not going to close down a coal mine. So. I had a combination, I looked at what did I have? So I had technology, I had the neuroscience of behavior change and habit forming and training around that, I had coaching skills, facilitation skills, and I knew it needed to be about action as well. Now I worked in change management and I used to be called Mr. Fluffy. <laughs> so I knew it had to align with action. So, like any good social entrepreneur, and um, I thought, how do we run an experiment around this? So I approached University of New South Wales, the Graduate Student Association. So they had a whole bunch of students come from overseas, um, had no sense of community, and uh, we spoke to them at their uh, inauguration and onboarding day and said, we're gonna run a 30-day challenge. No idea what it was gonna be, but we're gonna, we're gonna introduce the global goals to these people. So here's a launch at the Market Crouch Innovation Center on the 1st of October. And as you can see, a very diverse group of students. And we educated them about the global goals. And many people hadn't heard about the global goals. And also we shared that these global goals can feel really big. Like, how do we break them down into 
actions that we can actually do. So we challenge all of you, students were encouraged to choose one, two, or three of the global goals and associated actions. Yeah. We talked about Darcy Lunn, who's got a great piece of work called the Teaspoon to Change, which encourages people to do small actions every day. The global goals at org website has also got some actions you can do, small micro actions. We ask people to commit to do these uh, actions for 30 days and record them using the Create Mobile app. I was so proud that we had 15 different nationalities represented in this group. And on one of the days, one of the guys, Emiliano, he was from Mexico, he was Roman Catholic, and he said to me, Ronan, we've got Katharia from Iran. She's of Islam origin, Islam background. We've got Shailab over here is Hindu background. I'm Roman Catholic. No one's talking about religion. We've all come together because we've got a common purpose and a common cause. It's one of our proudest moments in the challenge. These are the most popular global goals as chosen by the students. So if you're running an organization or you're looking for an insight into what are some of the things that people are, feel passionate, this is what the students felt passionate about. Responsible consumption, good health and well-being, and climate action. So just a bit of an overview. We talk about change can actually start with a single coffee cup. My kids are sick of hearing me just use this example. So if they're following online, please bear with me for another few minutes. Um, so Cred Mobile app committed to three actions, reduced inequalities. I wanted to organize one meeting every week with these students to see what were some of the challenges that they face with coming from overseas, that I have any biases in my leadership style that I wasn't aware of. And then my commitment, no keep cup, no coffee. I had to become aware of my behaviors and my choices around my coffee cup. So coffee cup in the car, coffee cup in the bag, coffee cup in the office. And then we all know that how important gratitude is. So global goal three, we just got a target of 3.4, promote mental health, and um, I recorded three things I was grateful for every day. So every day I tracked how many coffee cups I saved in the mobile app. And on the last day of the challenge, I went to my local coffee shop and I said, do you mind if I borrow 42 coffee cups? To put them inside my cube cup. I put it up there and went, wow, that's how many coffee cups I've saved in a day. Then I started thinking, I'm drinking 504 coffee cups in a year. I've been drinking coffee for 20 years, for 10,000 coffee cups I've personally used. Then I started researching a bit more. And thought, Australians use 2.9 million coffee cups a day. So over a billion coffee cups a year go into landfill. Now, I know it's shifting and changing and there's biodegradable coffee cups, et cetera, but I can't unsee that. And this might seem like a bit like AA. So here I am standing up here, two and a half years later, I, Rona McDonald, have not used a single used coffee cup since. And I've changed a, a behavior. <laughs> uh, and, and this is not about you know, virtue signaling, um, but this is about helping people become aware of their behaviors and choices. So what I learned was no amount of people telling me what I needed to do, like my kids telling me, Dad, you can't use those coffee cups, they're not disposable. It was the experience of going through it, becoming aware of my behaviors and choices and seeing my personal impact. So what we want to do is help people see that their personal actions and choices can actually make a difference. We've heard about the global goals that seem very high, but just start by doing one small action every day. It will support a target, which will align to a goal, and we all understand the compounding impact of all of our collective actions. And then came COVID. We actually led with a human response at this time, and I was on a, listening to a podcast, and they said, if you've got your product, if you've got products, tools, or services that you can use for pro-social impact at the moment, we encourage you to go out and support communities. So we launched this thing called the Cred15 on the 27th of March, 2019, which we help people start their day at 7.15 every morning, very mindfully, and with a sense of connection, and finish their day every day at 5.15 with a sense of reflection and connection as well. We did 250 of these sessions and we gifted these to the community. We ran 15 30-day mental health and well-being challenges all over the world. And we built a community in 30 countries, people from 30 countries, and we did it all 
for free. But at that time, I, I reflected on what we talked about and I shared about the, the Great Reset, etc. And I thought, what does the world need now? You know, we don't need anyone revolutionizing the shopping experience, making it three minutes quicker to get like our pieces or whatever like that. I would, I would hazard that the world needs us all now to come together in partnership for the goals. And Paul Dunn, co-founder of B1G1, might be listening as well. I want to just acknowledge Paul. He encouraged me at that time as well to read a book called Cult Status by a guy called Tim Duggan, How to Build a Business That People Adore. And the first step of that is think impact first. What's the impact you want to create in the world? A lot of us know our purpose, some of us know our mission, but not many of us have an impact statement. So we went back and reinvented cred. So cred is the Irish word for believe. We're a beliefs-driven organization, and we believe the more we help each other, the more we help ourselves. And our purpose, sorry, skipping, our purpose is to help people live, learn, and give every day. A simple framework, a simple philosophy for a life well lived. Our mission is to inspire people to do three simple actions every day. Take care of yourself, put your own oxygen mask on first, learn and grow, and help others. And our impact, so by 2030, we want to be helping at least 3 million people do 9 million acts of kindness for themselves, others, and a planet every day. So we create together the world we love to live in. So how do we make that happen? So based around an app, the concept of an app, we're going to encourage people to do these individual actions through activation points like 30-day challenges. We want to help people create these experiences and amplify the impact that we have together. So our focus interaction, we have a lot of people coming to us who want to solve a mental health and well-being problem, or they genuinely want to support their people. We have other people who want to actually activate based on the global goals, and we have other organizations who want to improve um, retention and productivity and staff engagement, etc. So we have multiple starting points and multiple entry points, and then we help graduate people into our different programs. So what I want to share with you now is just a couple of our insights around what we're seeing as a result of the data we're collecting in our 30-day challenges. So examples of th three daily actions. So one action is to uh, choose a well-being goal, global goal three. Typically just check in with yourself, notice your energy level, notice what you're feeling, notice what you're thinking. Classic cognitive behavioral therapy approach, if anyone knows anything about that space. Um, help others do one act of kindness. And I talked about, and then choose one action, the UN Global Goals list. And we're not prescriptive about this. We're trying to encourage people to understand what do you feel passionate about? What's the difference that you want to create in the world? This framework aligns beautifully with take care of yourself, help others in the planet. Global Goal 3, take care of yourself, help others, help the planet. So we provide a personalized mobile app for people, our configurable actions, and browse the categories, they're all in there. Take care of yourself. Talked about the world's to-do list, it's in there in the app. And then we provide real-time insights. The data stays private to the individual, but we summarize and aggregate in it at an uh, uh, aggregated level. So this is an example of a 30-day challenge we were running in 2021 with a, a group called Ireland Together, a group of small medium enterprises and uh, entrepreneurs in Ireland. So about 500 participants and one of the actions was check in with yourself and notice your energy level. And one of the weekly webinars said, what happened in Ireland last week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? And the response was, that was when the government announced we were going to be locked down for 12 weeks. So the real impact we could see. So the community who supported this group of small medium enterprise owners were able to respond in real time. It wasn't a lag indicator. Is a lead indicator, which we're all looking for. Um, any data geeks out there? Any Power BI data geeks? No? Oh, one is the back. Okay, so 30-day challenge we ran with the University of Mississippi last year. And um, people were encouraged to do three well-being actions, check in, move for 30 minutes every day, and connect to one other person every day. 
So I checked the data at 6 a.m. every morning and looked and said, people are checking in, but no one's connecting or moving. And I thought, when is it raining in Oxford, Mississippi today? Check, check the weather app. It's raining. Email my stakeholders. Yeah, it's raining. It's a um, terrible day. Oh, no one feels like doing anything. The app reminded me to check in with myself, have a good connection. I've had some good connections and I feel better about myself. We need to remind students that moving the connection are important, even on gloomy days. So give me five minutes. In-app notification at the back. Personalized message went out to 5,000 students. Now we've all had those days where you wake up, you look out, you're not gonna do anything. Say I'm gonna exercise tomorrow, et cetera. What if you just got up and connected now? What else if you just did your movement now? Engagement doubled within 45 minutes. So we're seeing again, um, some insights around, we've run 20 challenges now and people are tired. I'm sure you can all relate to that on an individual basis. We're seeing our clients say, we've had this anecdotal information, now we've got the data to support it as well. Um, I would shout out to a men's mental health, health organization, WNOW, um, run by Ty Canelli, um, ex Sydney Swans player, and uh, Dave Eccles. First challenge where people actually recorded, they were grateful. So that's been the biggest shift we've had in the last number of months. We can see real-time engagement and understanding into which of the global goals people are passionate about. Challenge we did with Mary Baldwin University, um, and they said, we want students to co-create the curriculum with us. We want you to tell us what the global goals and actions you feel most passionate about. So the students have all the autonomy. So the, the university have the insight around issues that people feel passionate about. So you can see sustainability, climate action, responsible consumption, all very prominent. And these are the actions that people have chosen, again, full autonomy. Talk very briefly about impact. Similarly to Anna, we want to create impact on three levels, individual, organization, and global level. We want people to get better. We want communities to get better. We want companies to get better. And we want to see how do we create real impact? So we, like many of our organizations, have partnered with B1G1, buy one, give one. So every time yeah. someone does an action in the app and records it, it provides real-time impact. So when you check in, it provides one day's access to a playground for a child in Cambodia. When you move for 30 minutes, it provides one day's access to a science lab and education for a child in India. And when you connect with one person, it provides one day's access to water for a child in Tanzania, which is pretty cool. And here's cumulative impact of the challenge we did at University of Mississippi. 5,388 actions, 5,308 real measurable global impact. Final one, family challenge. Um, my daughter, Dara, who is uh, one of my accountability buddies, she's just there on the right. She always says, Dad, when I hear you pitch about cred, it never seems, sounds the same. And I'm like, it doesn't sound the same in my head, so there's nothing new. And um, she's like any parent who was um, par parenting and tried to homeschool during COVID. Um, it was a challenge. I found it a challenge. And Dara said to me in one of our walks, I hate trigonometry. Why do I do it? Why do I need to learn it? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And my dad responds, well, just do it. And then I realized, like, oh, this is so bloody lazy in school. I, like, it did nothing myself. So talked about what if we could just do small actions as a family and do a family challenge. So we committed in the month of October last year to do these three actions. So we would take care of ourselves. We'd all have to move for 30 minutes or 10,000 steps. We'd have to do an act of kindness for someone else in the family or, or, a, or a neighbor, et cetera. We bake something or do something like that. And then the kids decided that they wanted to focus on SDG 13 and um, climate action, we were committed to taking three minute showers. The kids had done some research and said, the average person takes an eight minute shower, it uses 80 liters of water, and it, we could save 50 liters of water per person per shower per day. So we all committed to doing these actions and it was pretty cool. Um, people walking around the house going, does anyone need anything done? Kindness, kindness, do you need anything done? So that was, that was, that was pretty cool. We also had a real time dashboard as well in the family, anonymized about the mood and the energy levels. You could see, People were angry and <laughs> or frustrated, and you knew just stay well away. It was all anonymized. Um, so here was the impact. So Dara had been on a B1G1 program and saw um, 
the projects that they're doing. And she felt very passionate about um, bringing traffic girls closer to home. So she chose that impact. So every time we did our take care of our action, take care of our self action, it, provide, it moved a traffic girl one kilometer closer to home. So in our 32, 30 days as a family, we moved a traffic girl 128 kilometers closer to home. We provided 133 days of access to education and we provided 131 days of access to clean water. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna wrap up in a minute. Just a couple of words of, of thanks. I wanna really acknowledge Mick. Mick, I know what you've done to make this happen. I've, I've been a friend on the journey with you and I really take my hat off to you for everything you've done to make 17X happen in Sydney and again to, to resurrect it as well. For, so cheering you on, wishing you the very best of success. <laughs> Yeah. Um, final thanks, Neve. I know you don't like public displays of affection. Um, <laughs> you talked about courage. It's not easy being a social impact entrepreneur. We're putting ourselves out there every day. We could do different things. I could use my tech to be a fintech. I don't want to. Neve, thank you for supporting me at Bacchus. So thank you. Um, <laughs> my invitation to you all is what's one action you could each do in the next 24 hours to either be kind to yourself do something kind to someone else or do something kind for the planet thank you very much